Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join one of my courses at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's EffortlessEnglishClub.com. So, you worry about being nervous uh, when you speak. In a conversation, if you're nervous, if you... If you are worried about making mistakes. Maybe you um, maybe you have a job interview and also that makes you very nervous, right? Or of course public speaking. But even just going and talking to people in a conversation can make you feel kind of nervous. And, uh, and the problem is when you get nervous like that, uh, you can really look nervous and you can look weak, right? And you know that that's going to hurt your communication. It's going to hurt your goals. People will not respect you the same if you look weak and nervous. And people won't... Um, you know, they won't listen to you as much. They won't believe you as much. They'll have more negative ideas about you. All of this when you look weak and nervous, when your communication is weak and nervous. And here's the thing, like how do you, um, how do you, how do you stop that? What creates the weakness? See, the problem is a, a, a lot of people, they focus on just the words. Oh, if I make a grammar mistake, oh, if I make a pronunciation mistake, it will look bad. But actually, that's not what the big problem is. See, you know, words communicate ideas and they can communicate emotions too. But the big thing that communicates and shows your emotion is body language. Right? Body language makes a very big difference. Nonverbal communication, meaning not words. Nonverbal communication is extremely important because your emotions come out in your body language. Even if you don't want them to, they come out. So you might use perfect words. You might speak English fluently. You might have good pronunciation even. In a job interview, you might say the right things. In a speech, you might give a good speech. The actual content, what you say, might be very good. But if inside you're afraid and nervous, and if you let that come out in your body language, you will destroy your communication. People will see that you're nervous. They will see you as weak. They will not respect you. They will not listen to you. You will not get the job if it's a job interview. Your presentation will be terrible. All of these things caused by body language. Body language is super important. Now, of course, so is the tone of your voice. I'll talk about that in another show. But today, I just want to talk about body language. Body language communicates emotion. And the problem is, it's hard to, when you're actually talking, especially in English, you're speaking a foreign language, it's hard to think about what you're doing with your body. And that's why, while you're thinking of your words, 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 some really bad things might be happening with your body language. So you saw, as I opened the show, if, you, if you're listening to, the, to this only, to the audio, you didn't see it, but you could probably even hear it in my voice. But you saw, you know, and I'm looking down the whole time doing my show. I mean, that's just terrible, right? Again, I'm exaggerating to show you 
how bad it can be. But just imagine, okay, you, if you are, I'm talking to you, we're at a party, and if I just, am I looking down the whole time as I talk, and I, I'm never looking in your eyes, or almost never? It looks weak, right? It looks terrible. Terrible. It doesn't matter how good my English is. It doesn't matter how good my words are. If, I have, if I'm looking down, if my shoulders are kind of down and forward, I look weak. I look fearful. I look unconfident. I, you won't respect me. In a job interview situation, man, that's just terrible, right? So the interviewer is going to be looking at you and you're just, he, he or she will be just thinking I, you're not confident. They'll just feel that you're just not good. Even if your resume is great, even if your job experience is great, even if everything else is great, and even if you give great answers, but if you do the answers looking like this, looking with your head down and shoulders and, oh, then that's just that's not good the, the, right the nonverbal communication is weak 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 that is a disaster and in a public speech well it's horrible because then you're standing on a stage everybody sees you <laughs> and if you're doing that uh, oh, horrible right everybody will just feel terrible They'll feel that you are a terrible speaker. They might be nice. Hopefully, they'll be nice to you, but they just won't respect you. So, this is important. You have got to change your weak body language. Now, the good news is you can do it. You can train yourself to do it. More good news is that is it's actually quite simple. What you need to do is simple. The hard part is remembering to do it while you're speaking. Right? Because what happens is you start focusing on your words, you concentrate on the words, and then you forget about your body, and then, uh, and then your bad habits come. Or maybe your nervousness or your, your negative emotions start taking control of your body. <laughs> right? You don't even realize it. And you think you're saying good things, you're focused on your words, but then your, your, your shoulders start coming down and forward, and you, you start looking down more. And you can even do other things too, like these, you know, like with your arms crossed, which just looks like you're a little bit worried or nervous. Movement, also certain kinds of movement. If you're, you know, kind of moving back and forth too much like this, all of these things are very weak. So you got to train yourself to do just a few simple things. More good news. You do not have to be perfect, okay? Uh, I'm going to give you some ideas in future shows, I'll do more about this, body language and gestures and things. You don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect either. I have a few little body language bad habits that I'm still working on. I'll watch myself on video giving a speech and I'll see something that I'm doing like, ooh, that doesn't look so good. That looks kind of weak. So I still have a little ba few bad habits too, but I'm much better than I used to be. And you also can be. So let's talk about some general ideas about body language, and then I'll give you specific examples. First of all, you want strong body language, usually. In most situations, you want to appear confident. So, strong body language. One principle, open body language is stronger. Right? You can see if I'm, if I'm opening my body, like see, my, so my chest comes out and up. My arms open up. They're not crossed in front of me. They're not in front of me. This, is, this looks defensive. This looks more like I'm nervous or weak. But when you open yourself up, shoulders back, chest out. This, this is open. First of all, it, it looks friendly also, but it also looks strong. So two good things. Stronger and friendlier both when you open. Same with your hands. What's interesting is if your hands, if the backs of your hands are facing other people, right? You're talking to people. If they see the back of your hands, it's weaker. But if they see the open part of your hand, the palms of your hands, that's stronger. Again, it's more open. It looks more trusting, more open, more friendly, and also stronger. So, open body more and open gestures. So, open hands and open arms, same thing. Now, this is a, I have to 
think about this sometimes because I have sometimes a bad habit. I, we all do. If you get tired, you'll let your, you let your shoulders drop a little bit and your chest will kind of drop down. Looks a little bit weaker. I have to remind myself to straighten up and open up sometimes. Another thing I do is sometimes I have my elbows will be against my body. That also is weaker. It looks better if your elbows stay out away from your body, at least a little bit. Again, because it's more open. That's a stronger, more open body language. So in general, open. Hands open, arms out and open more, chest up and out. Everything open is stronger, friendlier. That's okay sometimes to, you know, drop down. And, but I'm just saying in general, most of the time, try to be open. Now, of course, what's the opposite of that? Closed. So, closed is when you, if you're start, if you're keeping your hands more in front of you instead of out open. That's that's this is kind of weaker. It looks defensive. It looks like you're trying to guard yourself, protect yourself, which communicates the emotion or the idea that you're maybe a little worried or afraid. So you don't want to do that too much. Well, you know, a little bit you can do it, but just be careful. Now. I mentioned shoulders, so another general principle is up. Up is usually better than down. Power English users, those of you who got, have my Power English course, you know the beginning of every lesson I'm saying shoulders back, chin up. Up, 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 because up is a stronger body language position. It'll make you feel better. You actually, inside, will feel a little stronger and more confident when you change your body language, but also on the outside, other people looking at you, you will look stronger, you will look friendlier, you will look more confident. So keeping that chin up and not down. Because even if you're, even with eye contact, if I put my chin down and I'm looking at you still, right, it still doesn't, it doesn't look good. It looks weak still. But as I raise my chin up, eye contact with you, that looks a lot stronger, more confident. So up, and again, shoulders also, you want back and up a little bit. This is kind of a posture thing. So if you have bad posture, like I do, because <laughs> I usually do have bad posture, uh, this is something you might have to think about a lot. You've got to train yourself to do this. So shoulders back, so up is another general principle. Eyes, very important. Eyes are one of the most important parts of body language, nonverbal communication. And again, you want those eyes up, up looking into other people's eyes. Direct eye contact, very important, right? You don't want to be looking down at people's stomach when you talk to them. And you definitely don't want to be looking down at their shoes because then you look super weak. So eyes up, chin up and eyes up, now, some people in some cultures are less comfortable with eye contact. I'll give you a few tricks. You can look here, right, between like the forehead, kind of between the eyes. If you feel uncomfortable looking directly in the eyes, then you can look between, right there. Right, kind of at the top of the nose, between the eyes, or right around the eyebrows. You see, it still looks like you're giving eye contact, but maybe you'll feel a little more comfortable doing that. In a larger group, like giving a public speech, what you're going to do is you're going to make eye contact with different individuals in the room. I'll talk about this because there's some techniques you can use in public speaking. I'll do that in a future show. But just in general, think that as you talk, you're looking individual members of the audience in the eyes. So you're still, you're making real eye contact. Some um, public speakers, they tell you, uh, or some books or courses they tell you to look at the back of the room at the wall that's a bad idea don't do that it doesn't look good if you're just looking at the back of the room the whole time everyone feels like you're looking over their head there's no connection and of course you don't want to look down at the floor either so you want to be actually making eye contact with different people in the audience constantly as you talk in a job interview eye contact again so we got up 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 now, what about movement? What about gestures? Well, in general, don't think too much about your gestures. Don't overthink it. If you overthink it, they will look weird. There's actually a guy named Brian Tracy. 
Now, I like Brian Tracy. He's a very good guy. I like his uh, books. He's a really good writer. He's a motivator, business person. He's a good speaker. But I have to say, the guy has really strange gestures. They, they look totally unnatural. <laughs> okay? They look weird to me. They don't look weak. They're not weak. I'm, but they look unnatural and weird. And I think it's because he's, he's thinking too carefully, like he's consciously planning every single gesture. Every gesture looks like he is planning it, telling you exactly what he's going to do. But every gesture is consciously planned. <laughs> it looks kind of like that when I see him speak on video. And every time I think, oh, that, that looks weird. Okay? So you don't want that. You don't want a conscious, like a robot, gesturing. You want your gestures to come from your natural emotion and energy. Okay? So, so let your arms move kind of freely. Just have a general thought. Open, open, open. Okay, so your gestures aren't here in front of your face, in front of your body, and small. Your gestures are a little bit larger and more open. The general movement of your gestures should be an opening movement from the inside to the outside. So more of this, not, not that. Okay, you see the difference? See, I'm opening as I'm making gestures, but I'm not going to carefully plan every one because it looks weird. I'm just going to, you know, let myself talk and let my hands go as they want, just with the general idea of open, open, open. Got it? So that's a little bit easier. So how do you practice all this stuff? How do you practice this? Well, a good way to practice is just as you walk around during the day, I mean, any time in the day, even while you're sitting, you can practice all of this stuff, right? You can, okay, oh, you're gonna just be conscious and remind yourself. You could do a timer on your, on your phone or your watch or something every, I don't know, 30 minutes. Bing, little timer goes off and you just immediately check your, your posture, check your nonverbal communication, right? And see, a lot. Of, you'll catch yourself kind of doing this stuff like I do a lot. <laughs> and so you, you, you real okay, when you hear the alarm, you know, shoulders back, open up, get, get, you know, open up. Another general idea to think of is you want to take space, you want to take up more space. Okay, like you'll see strong, dominant men do this naturally. If you watch when they sit, they don't sit like this, right? They don't have their elbows in. You can't see my legs, but, you know, you their legs aren't in really close. And their hands like this. This is weak, right? Everything is in and small. It's closed. So, strong, dominant, confident men. It's the opposite. Everything is open and big. They take up a lot of space. You'll see, even if they're relaxed, if they're laying back, they, they take up a lot of space. It's more like this, you know? Mm hmm right? The arms are out, the legs are more are wide, right? It's open. Now, I believe this goes back to biology. I've read this, and it seems like a good theory. That Think about it. If you're afraid, if you're back in the wild, right, when we were hunting and fighting, um, if you're afraid, you're going to try to protect yourself. What will you protect? Well, you know, your throat, this is a dangerous area, right? You'd also try to protect the, you know, the, the center of your body. This is where you can be hurt the most. So if you're scared and weak, you're going to close up and try to protect those areas. You're going to have your chin down to protect yourself. But if you're big and strong like a huge big gorilla, you're not afraid of anybody, then you're going to be big and open because nobody's going to challenge you. This is sort of the unconscious <laughs> communication that's happening. Now, if you're not a, naturally a big, strong, tough guy, and I'm not, then you have to work on this a little bit. It's going to take a little practice. So again, set a little timer throughout the day. And just each time you hear the timer, get some strong body language. If you're talking at that time, just, just think open, open, open. So do your gestures naturally. Don't try to control them too much, but just... Open them up a little bit. Make your gestures a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, a little more open, whatever they are. You know, I have ones you can see. These are just natural, though. I don't plan them out. I will 
I don't practice specific gestures because it looks weird. Uh, I do my natural gestures, but I just try to do them bigger and more open. Now, eventually, you'll train yourself to do this naturally so that the new habit of being bigger and more open, this will become your new habit. And that's good. In fact, this has happened to me. So my gestures used to be small and everything was weak looking. Then I trained myself, trained myself, bigger open, bigger open, especially when I was speaking. And now it's my habit is to kind of do big gestures like this. <laughs> but then what's funny is then when I started doing more videos, uh, I had uh, some coaches that were helping me with video. And they said, AJ, you're, for video, you're... It look, you know, it's strong, but your gestures are too big, right? Because I, I was used to gesturing for big stages and large groups of people. And when you speak to a large group of people, you got to really exaggerate this. Everything has to be huge and big and super open. But for a one-on-one -on -one conversation or for a video like this, a little more controlled is fine. You're not, you don't need to do this, <laughs> okay? But, but just you know a little bit out just just outside your shoulders something like this okay these kind of moves so practice this this will make you look much stronger in everything you do bigger more open up good eye contact practice those things that will help your job interview skills will help your public speaking will help just your normal conversations in english even if you're making mistakes with grammar, even if your pronunciation is so-so, if you speak with strong, positive body language like this, people will listen to you more. They'll still respect you more, even if your English is not great. Okay? So it's important to practice this nonverbal communication every time you speak English, every time you practice English, every time you even listen to English, strong body language, super important. All right, for a text transcript of this show and all my past shows, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com.